Well, many of you know that after I graduated from seminary, part of my ministry consisted of teaching religion as a religion teacher at St. Stephen's St. Agnes School in Alexandria, Virginia. And this day school educates students in pre-K through 12th grade. And part of the school tradition and philosophy is that the staff and the faculty, employees, and the students, the entire community, is held to a very high standard. Everyone is asked to work hard, to put in 100% effort, to go the extra mile in teaching and learning, in personal development, and in relationships. And of course, the work or the job to which one is assigned. And in turn, the community is rewarded well and plays hard, too. Staff are given appreciation days, faculty receive enrichment, education, and support, and the head of school and the administration help build the community like a family. The community cares for each other through life's ups and downs, and the community has fun together, too. And as a result, at least when I was part of the school community, something really magical and holy happened. When we were called and challenged, but also given the grace and resources through the community to meet and embrace those challenges, we were empowered to be our best selves. We wanted to do our best. The care and support and even the challenge encouraged us and made many of us teachers to, be, to want to be the best teachers that we could be. And thus, the community that was created by this love and care and grace and challenge was one that embodied integrity and honesty and joy and love. And it shared these things with the world around it, too. And I'm thinking about this dynamic in relation to the gospel that we just heard today. In the gospel, we hear once again, as we've had the last few weeks, about God in Christ being the bread of life. Jesus says, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. And this is the bread that came from heaven. Those who eat this bread will live forever. Jesus says that God in Christ is the bread that sustains us, encourages us, and empowers us in our lives. And in our gospel today, the disciples have an interesting reaction to that message. They say, this teaching is difficult. This teaching about God and Jesus being the bread of life is sometimes just hard to understand. It's difficult sometimes for our hearts to grasp. And Jesus responds by confirming that, yes, it can be a difficult message. But he never promises that his words or his call on our lives or that following him is easy. Sometimes the words that God has for us and the things to which God calls us are actually beautifully scary and greatly challenging. But in the words and in the call and in our following is truth and love. And as Christ says today in the gospel, spirit and life. And this is where today's gospel intersects with that experience I had at St. Stephen's St. Agnes School. Because just like the school community that shares and spreads integrity, joy, and love when it is cared for and held to high standard and even called to the difficult work, we Christians can transform communities and the world around us when we are loved and cared for and called to difficult work by Christ. Sometimes we hear God speak challenging words to us or call us to a difficult task or journey but because we're also sustained by those words and sustained by the bread that is life. We're empowered to be courageous and to do God's work. We're empowered to respond to the call to help God transform the world from a place that can be lonely and fearful, isolated, maybe filled with sickness and death, to one that looks more like the kingdom, a place of inclusion and community and wholeness and love. And we're not alone in this work, because God in Christ, the bread of life, sustains us. We don't rely on our limited power or our own courage or our own grace, thankfully, but God's. Nonetheless, as Jesus says today, some, may not be, some just may not be open to the possibility of what God offers through the bread that sustains. Some may turn away, 
And sometimes the one who turns away is you and me. We all have moments when we would rather rely on our own willpower or control. And when we do, we miss the opportunity to be challenged in that uniquely scary yet beautiful way of doing God's work. And we miss the opportunity in that moment to be empowered by God to continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, the breaking of bread and in the prayers. And maybe in that moment we miss the opportunity to be empowered by God to persevere in resisting evil, to proclaim the good news, seek and serve Christ in all persons, or to strive for justice and peace and respect every human being. But then when we turn toward God and let the bread of life feed us, we also can join together again as one body and be stronger than we ever could be alone or on our own. We can powerfully support and love our brothers and sisters in Haiti, who once again have endured an earthquake and natural disaster. And we can support and love our friends in Afghanistan who are struggling for justice. And we can support and love each other and all others who need help and grace and friendship. Because we're sustained by the bread of life. And because so, we can advocate for all people for black lives, and for the realization that love is love, and that no human is illegal, and that hate has no home in our communities. This work can be hard, and it can be risky, but we get called to risky things when we open ourselves to God. The work that we're called to do is beautiful and holy, and we're held and we're sustained through all of it by the one who is the bread of life. And as our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, says, being a Christian is not essentially about joining a church or being a nice person, but about following in the footsteps of Jesus, taking his teachings seriously, letting his spirit take the lead in our lives, and in doing so, helping to change the world from our nightmare into God's dream. And healing this world and changing the world from a nightmare into God's dream can sound almost like an insurmountable task. But following Christ in this work and being sustained by him is the way of love. We Episcopalians believe in a loving and liberating, life-giving God. As Michael Curry says, is the Episcopal branch of the Jesus movement. We're sustained by the gospel of Jesus Christ as the bread that feeds us. And we're further sustained by this bread in our baptism, in the Eucharist, the prayers, fellowship, and all of the rites in the community of the church. So this is good news. And I encourage you to let the bread of life feed you. Let it sustain you. And then I invite you to ask yourself, what risky or challenging work is God calling you to do for God's sake, in this world. Amen.